Hey everyone! I'm really excited because today is actually the day before I go on a really big landscape painting trip. So as of tomorrow I'm going to be leaving for six and a half weeks and I'm going to be painting my way around the east coast and sort of the eastern states of Australia. So um, by the time this video posts it will be Easter so happy Easter everyone and I will see you next week and if I'm if I don't post a vlog next week uh, then don't panic maybe I'm just tired or something um, but if I don't post a vlog the week after maybe there, there might be slight cause for concern it might mean that I didn't make it back um, but we'll see we'll see what happens I mean the Australian Outback can be quite a scary place so you know you have to just be prepared for anything and um, yeah, well anyway, I should make it back though. I have a good feeling about this trip, so I'm excited. I'm really excited. So I got Elise to make a whole heap of maps for me. Uh, she made like a, a digital map that has like all of the stops that I'm going to. Of course, there's probably a couple more that aren't on there, but I just had it so that there was like a general direction for the trip. Uh, we put 45 stops. I think there should be 47. Um, Oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm nervous because I haven't packed and we're going to have to pack in this vlog or at least go through what I'm packing in this vlog. Um, and I really should be packing right now. I should have packed yesterday, but then my car had some problems. So I had to go and get that fixed and it was just something I wasn't expecting. So anyway, at least it's fixed. And um, yeah, it means that I have to hurry up and make this vlog and schedule this vlog and pack my stuff and also I have to schedule some other vlogs today. It's going to be a very, very busy day. Um, but anyway, let me show you guys a map of where I'm going because I'm, I'm really excited about, um, about this trip actually. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this for basically a year. At first I didn't know uh, where I was going um, and the idea only came to me, yeah, I guess around about a year ago when Elise and I went on a trip uh, just just to Victoria just for like a week and I was like you know what I just want to run away live in my car eat tuna and paint a different landscape every single day and she was like yeah why not and so then I wrote it down on a piece of paper I was like this is happening and now it's the day before the trip and it's actually happening guys <laughs> um, which is really exciting <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm also nervous. Um, I'm I'm rambling. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna have to cut out like half of this. Let me show you guys the map. Uh, so I have I have a lot of um a lot of pieces of paper in my hand uh, because there's there's a lot to go through with you guys. Paperwork. If you're not excited, maybe you should turn this one off. <laughs> okay. So this is the map of where I'm going. So um I start here at uh at the cathedral in the city, and then I will be going to a conservation park in the Riverland and then I will be going to the Perry Sand Hills. I'm really excited for that because they are literally like an orange sand desert just in a town in New South Wales. They are so beautiful and so painting there is going to be a real treat. Um, and then I'm going to the Australian Inland Botanical Gardens. I'm also excited about that. Um, I went there once and it was the first time in my life I ever saw a Sturt Desert Pea. So I don't know if they're out at this time, but if they are, it would be so cool to paint one of those. Um, and then I'm going to uh, this national park that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name. It's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll attempt when I'm there, but <laughs> not right now. It's, it's, uh, oh yeah, I don't know how to say that. It's got way too many um, letters and uh, they're, not many of them are vowels. Uh, okay, cool. So then we go down here to Mount Arrow Piles. Now that looks really cool. I've seen images of it. It's just like this big rocky looking mountain. We should be headed towards uh, Lake Lonsdale and the Grampians. And then we will definitely be going to Murray Valley National Park, um, which should be exciting. And then uh, Colligan's Beach. Then we go to Adam's Lookout. And then we go to the Blue Mountains National Park. And um, we will be, oh, it'll be the end of summer. There might be some autumn colours if we're lucky. But we'll definitely be catching autumn colours on the way back. Um, provided that the plants are all behaving. Because I have noticed that plants are just 
acting weird lately because they're confused by the weather. Um, okay, and then we will be going to the Stockton Sand Dunes, which is super exciting. Um, it looks really good in the pictures, so I hope it looks it's as good in real life as the pictures. Then we'll be headed up to Coffs Harbour, and then we'll go to the Border Rangers National Park. Um, then we'll go to Stradbroke Island, the Sunshine Coast. I'm actually meeting a friend in the Sunshine Coast, but we might also meet somewhere down here in New South Wales. And um, this this friend of mine contacted me um, for the first time uh, actually online, which I don't normally trust people online, but he seems really nice and he's another painter. So we're going to be painting together, which I'm super excited about. And um, there might be an opportunity to swim with turtles, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll just be amazing to like, to meet with someone and paint with them for a little bit. So that will be lovely. And then uh, from there, I will go to the Glasshouse Mountains and then I'll go down to Sundown National Park and then I'll go to Tarakave Warrumbungal National Park. Don't try and pronounce that. Actually, you can. I am telling myself I should not try and pronounce that. Yeah, we'll go to that national park and then we'll go to the Goulburn River National Park and then we should cross over our own path about here. So we'll be going to the, the Blue Mountains Botanical Gardens and then I'll go to Figure Eight Pools and Seacliff Bridge. Now I'm pretty excited about that one because that is a spot where the the road actually goes off the land. Um, so I don't know that I want to paint it so much as just to see it because it looks so cool. Um, and then we will go to Blue Pool Carrington Falls and then we're going to go to this national park which I'm not going to try and pronounce the name again. And then we will go to Mount Kosciuszko. Now by this stage, it should be autumn. So hopefully there will be amazing autumn colors around. Mount Kosciuszko is actually one of those mountains that snows. So it's up pretty high, so I'm really excited. And then we will go to Nariel Valley. I think that's how to pronounce it. And then Alpine National Park. So we're going through like the mountain region now and hopefully there's just gonna be such amazing colors and hopefully it won't be too cold. <laughs> um, and then we go to Reefton Lookout. And then we go to Hanging Rock. And then we go to Teddy's Lookout and Biddle's Beach and Von Gurad Lookout. Now that one I'm actually really excited for. I might not paint exactly at the lookout because there's other spots nearby the lookout that are like up high that have nice views. Um, so I'll probably just pick one of those. But Von Gurad Lookout is actually named after the artist Eugene Von Gurad. And he did some really amazing paintings and actually his painting from Von Gurad Lookout of Tower Hill um, was used to help conservationists uh, re... Um, what's it called? Uh, so the, the environment got damaged and then they had to like re-establish it. I, I think that's totally the wrong word, but um, basically when they were re-establishing the environment, they looked at his painting and they were like, okay, so there's these trees, these trees and these trees. And they were able to like completely restore it. That's the word I was looking for, restore. And um, yeah, so that's, that's really cool. And I think it would be really amazing to go near there and do a painting. Um, his paintings are amazing, by the way. So if you haven't heard of him, just look him up. It's Eugene von Gurad, one of Australia's great painters. Um, and then we will be going to Griffith Island. And then we will go to Cape Nelson uh, Lighthouse. Then we'll go to Discovery Bay. Um, I'm going to be headed to this area of Discovery Bay called Swan Lake. And it's got like massive white sand dunes. Swan Lake is the camping grounds near it. That's just the easiest way to put it into a map. Um, and then we will go to Mount Shank, and then we will go to Blue Lake Lookout. So then we will go to Centenary Tower, uh, and then we'll go to Leg of Mutton Lake Crater, um, and then we will go to Amphison Sinkhole, and then we'll go to Potter's Point Lookout, and then we'll go to Tantanula Cave. And then on the way home, we will just make one stop in Robe to paint a beach there. And then we will arrive back home. So that's my trip. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys can see this map okay. And so, yeah, you can see my route goes like that and like that and like that. And then 
back that way and it's really exciting stuff. Um, we should see some amazing autumn colors. We'll get some beautiful beach scapes, maybe some like summery kind of environments. We'll get some rainforesty sort of environments, I'm pretty sure. So it's gonna be like a real mix. So for this, I am going to be staying in my little Toyota Corolla and I'm just gonna be putting the driver's seat down to sleep. Um, I'm not staying in campgrounds or campsites. I'm just parking somewhere on the side of the road in a parking lot anywhere. I am going to be living mostly on just tinned tuna. I bought that already, um, so I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I have like no budget for this trip. Um, so that's hence why we're not even staying in unpowered camping sites. I have uh, probably just enough money to uh, to get my petrol. Um, yeah, oh, it's exciting. Uh, so I've already bought all my paints and everything. Hopefully they're all going to last long enough uh, for this trip. And um, I did put a, um, oh, what do you call it? A, a storage box on top of my car. And we kind of customized it. So uh, my best mate put a, um, a solar panel on top of my storage box. So now I can put a solar powered generator into the storage box and I can swap it out each day just so that all my devices can be charged, i.e. my GoPro, my phone, my camera, everything. Um, there's not much signal out in the middle of nowhere. In fact, some days there will be no signal for quite a while. Um, I am afraid of the dark and I did a trail run of this trip last year. It was seven days. It was amazing. I loved every moment except there was one night where it was like so dark and there was not even street lights nearby because it was like out in the country and towns are like pretty few and far between and so yeah no stars no moon full clouds no street light it was like I couldn't even see the bonnet of the car in the dark it was it was a bit intimidating um I did not sleep very well that night um but yeah no it's uh there's there's a lot of ground to cover on this trip. Yeah, okay, so I've got the, the information all here. Um, so my longest section of driving is 509 kilometers, which is six hours and 47 minutes. And that's between Sundown National Park and the Warrumbungal National Park. Um, I will probably add a couple of stops in there because that's like seven hours of driving. That's a lot. Um, and then my shortest uh, drive. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't realize that that was a, yeah. Okay. So my shortest drive is between um, Blue Lake Lookout and Centenary Tower. And that's three minutes. Because this trip is going over the entire span of Lent up to Easter, uh, Elise has made me a map of all the churches along my route and all their their like mass times on what day, uh, their addresses, and if they have confession and adoration, it's in this column. So there's um there's quite a few pages of these. Uh, as you can see, it's just yeah a lot, uh, which is great. That means I have plenty of options for stops uh, for Sunday mass. Um, which is lovely. So I will be keeping this for reference and um, looking at it anytime that I want to go to a church along my way. And now the bit we've all been waiting for, packing. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we are going to be going through the packing list. Um, so the first thing on there is uh, clothing storage organizers. I think these are actually called packing cubes and I bought some the other day from Kmart and they are super handy. So let me show them to you. Uh, so they come in a pack that's that's like this, and that's that's the smallest of the sizes, and then obviously there's um, slightly bigger ones in there. They come in three packs, um, and so you can store your clothes in here. But the the cool thing about it, I'll just take this one out of here. The cool thing about it is that the net is actually see through, so you can see what you've got zipped up in this little um, storage cube, and they're like a yeah, you can fit actually a lot in there because they're quite 3D. Um, and so I will be using these to pack all my clothes in. So I'll be packing lots of different clothes because the weather is going to be all over the place. I'm traveling through the mountains. I'm traveling through like the outback, the beaches. 
and four different states and uh, the states over here in Australia have extreme differences in the climate. So South Australia, where I'm from, is usually uh, fairly dry, um, although having said that the last couple of years the weather's been a bit odd. Um, so yeah, usually fairly dry, uh, a bit on the warmer side, and then uh, Victoria is like always winter. <laughs> it's, well, I don't know how anyone actually lives there, um, but it's really pretty. But it's, yeah, it's always winter. I, it's too cold for me. Um, New South Wales is, uh, well, it's kind of normal. Like, it doesn't have anything that particularly stands out, like, weather-wise. And Queensland is extremely tropical. So these are the four states that I'll be traveling through. And, um, yeah, obviously I need to pack accordingly. So I will have long sleeve tops and short sleeve tops and pants and dresses and shorts and jumpers and scarves and beanies and gloves and my ski jacket and underpants and uh, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and socks and my Sunday best. So this bag here has my Sunday best. So as an artist, I have three types of clothes. I have clothes with paint on them, clothes that are gonna have paint on them, and my Sunday best. And I have to keep these ones away from all my other clothes. So I'm gonna put these in my roof storage box just so that I don't accidentally wear them painting or get dirt on them or anything. So um, yeah, and hopefully, uh, I will be able to wear these on Sundays to church. And also pajamas because I need to sleep and that would be good. Um, I am going to have a hat with me. Now this hat, I'm gonna show it to you. So it's just a fairly normal hat and I'm really excited about this one actually because I got it from a service station and it's just like the comfiest hat like ever. Um, oh, sorry. The there we are. So yeah, you can see it's got like a nice broad brim. It's pretty firm, so that's not gonna like get in the way of my painting or anything. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's got this, this nice tie, so it ties up nicely. Um, it's, I guess, made of straw. It's really comfy. It's like the best hat ever. So the reason I have this hat is I was out swimming in the beach with my two best friends and after that, we went to a service station uh, because one of my best friends wanted a slushie. And then when we got there, he was like, do you girls want anything? And, you know, like, I guess he was expecting us to be like, oh yeah, like a chocolate bar or something. But I happened to see this hat in the window. I'm like, that hat. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I have it because it is really, really comfy. <laughs> I absolutely love this hat. Um, I will also pack uh, sandals because, you know, like obviously the, there's going to be some times where I don't want to wear shoes with socks. Um, I will pack uh, slides because I'm going to need something for my feet while I'm having a shower. Um, shower is a, uh, is a strong word for um, what I'm using. But anyway, I will get to that in a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then... Yeah, obviously I need shoes, so I put those on the list, and spare shoes, because anything could happen. Like, I've had it where I've been, like, out taking photos, and the ocean has come in and touched my shoes, and it actually destroyed them. Like, it, I don't know, it destroyed the glue or something. Um, but also spare shoes, because, you know, if I cross through a river or something, I don't want to wear wet shoes. That's just, oh, that doesn't sound pleasant, especially when I have, like, you know no no warm cozy place to go home to um i mean my car's you know it's cozy enough but it's uh it's not a house so you know it's uh yeah spare shoes is definitely important now i'm going to take my hat off and then we'll continue going through the list so these here are my extra shoes i have some sandals uh some good shoes for, for sunday church and then just some extra running shoes on top. And I'm also gonna be putting these in the storage box that's on the roof of my car, because that's just a nice, easy place to find them. Uh, next on the list, uh, we have uh, water. So I buy like 10 liter boxes of water. I'm not gonna hold one up because they're quite heavy. How about the 10, 10 kilos, I guess. Um, but I have bought four of them. I should have probably bought six, which would be one per week. Um, but realistically, I don't drink that much water and also, um, I don't want to be carrying like 60 kilos extra weight in the car because it's going to go through fuel a bit more. 
I mean, I'm already carrying 40 kilos extra, extra weight just by having those four water boxes. Um, so I think four should be enough. And if I need more, I can buy more on my trip. All right, so for water, I have these Marble Hill spring water bottles. You open them there and there's like a little, um, little tap with a lever that you can use. And I picked the Marble Hill ones because honestly, they're the best. Uh, all the other waters taste like metal and disgusting, but this water is really tasty and you can only buy it in South Australia as far as I'm aware. So I picked up four of them. Um, hopefully it will be enough for my trip, but I'll let you guys know. And then I have, um, I have, uh, reusable water bottles. So I have these two reusable water bottles. I just filled them up with water from my filtered tap inside, um, so that they're all ready to go. And I will be putting one in the back driver's door. So I just put it here and also in the back driver's door right here, I have a raincoat in case of any bad weather. The other one is in the front driver's door for easy access in case I get really thirsty while I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And also in the front driver's door, I have a brush because my hair is going to get like terribly knotty from all the sea air. And also in the front driver's door, I have some hand sanitizer. With this extra spot that's in the side of my driver's door, I'm going to be putting some toothpaste. And I've already put a toothbrush in there as well. So that's so that I can use that easily anytime, day or night. So in this side door of my car, I am keeping some AeroGuard and some spray on sunscreen, even though I prefer the other sunscreen. This one is still Banana Boat brand. So I'm gonna assume it's good because I like the other one that's Banana Boat. And the front passenger door of my car, I have a packet of pocket tissues. I have some holy water. I have some mosquito repellent. Uh, and I have pop-up shades for the front of the car, just in case the car gets hot. So I have some 1.5 litre water bottles that are filled with water that I bought from the shops. Now they're not for drinking because I don't like that brand of water, it tastes bad. But the reason I bought them is for my showers. Um, so what I do is I put one of those 1.5 litre bottles of water on the dash of the car during the day and because the sun is like you know it's in the sky <laughs> where it belongs um the sun goes through the windscreen and heats up the water and actually this works so well I tested it on my trial run of this trip last year when I went on a little seven day trip and oh my gosh it heated up the water so good and also like I did it with like some baked beans on the dashboard of my car I nearly burnt my mouth on them so yeah it does an amazing job um which is great because a lot of the time by the time that I get back to the car the sun's actually like close to out of the sky so you know like it will have had a chance to cool off a little but it'll still be quite warm water and um obviously I'm not just gonna get a water bottle and like pour it over me because that, that's, that's not gonna go very far so what I've done is I have this bottle and this bottle if you can see the lid actually has drilled holes in it now I've just used a 1.5 uh, millimeter drill bit to drill these holes actually my friend did this one for me but um, uh, so basically this bottle is now a shower which sounds weird but I'm gonna show it to you because I'm gonna like show you a demo because it is so cool and this is way better than carrying one of those camp showers because I find that you know they're too heavy they take too much space they don't heat up very well this is this is this is genius like actual genius all right so let's do a demo of this shower bottle so I've got the shower bottle and I've got a tap so uh, I'm just going to take the lid off the shower bottle and then I'm going to fill up the shower bottle with the tap now, I won't fill it all the way, but I'll fill it a little bit just so that you guys can, can see. Um, that'll be enough for the demo. I've just filled this up a little bit for my demonstration. And as you can see, when you tip it upside down, it doesn't leak until you squeeze it. And then you have a fully functioning shower which, as I said, I'll be heating up water on the dash, but 
yeah fully functioning shower bottle so i store my hand wash bottles in between the door and the seat uh, on both the driver's side and over on the passenger side and they're already filled up ready to go so that I can just get to my car and know exactly where it is and I can wash my hands and so on the floor in the front I have a Marble Hill water bottle that's in use and some of these 1.5 litre bottles which I use for heating up for shower water in this little section that's next to the gear stick I'm just gonna put this tiny towel now the reason I've put that there is in case in the morning the windows are foggy and I need to wipe them. I have my spare uh, generator. Uh, it's on 100%, which is great. Um, and this one will be good if I want to charge anything in the front uh, while the other generator is charging on the roof. And so this one is just going to go down here so that if I want to charge anything overnight, I easily will be able to. And also, I've got a, a little um, package that has a wall charger for it in case I do manage to plug it into an electric power point or I need to at some stage. And also it has a charger that runs to the cigarette lighter in the car so if I need to charge it that way I can. I'm just placing this pair of thongs or flip flops or whatever you like to call them inside my passenger seat on the door so just there next to my other hand washing bottle and um, I'm also putting a box of tissues down there. Now I've just put this bag here, this one actually has some food in it, it has some crackers, some tuna, just uh, some chili flakes, all of that, because um, I took some of it out of the esky and put it into this bag. So I have these odor neutralizing nappy bags and they're gonna be great for putting like rubbish in in between when I can actually throw it in the bin. Uh, so I'll put them in these and then probably in a slightly larger bag, but these will just be good to make sure that nothing smells. I've put the bag with the stuff that I'll be using for my showers in the front seat because that kind of needs to stay close by. Also, I've, I've got here that I need to pack my paints. Um, so I will be taking all the, all the fairly basic colors like white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, black, ultramarine, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, alizarin crimson, and cadmium red. Uh, I also do have a couple of other colors that I bought because I thought they looked exciting. Um, and then flow medium or thinning medium um, because that is incredible for doing details. I really like it. So I bought a new one of that just the other week. Palette knives and paint brushes, brush towels, uh, they're just normal towels, actually I use toweling nappy towels and they're really good for, for wiping the paint off brushes like once I've put it in like solvent and stuff but there's still always like a bit of residue so I just wipe them on that, that's easy. Um, uh, linseed oil and solvent because you really need those when you're oil painting. Palette paper, so obviously when I'm out painting I need something to put my paint on I take some containers with me like glass jars and that's for solvent now the reason I'm taking spares because obviously I've already got a container that has solvent I've also got one that has linseed oil that I haven't been able to open for six months um, so the containers sometimes these glass jars they get really stuck and I'm not strong enough to open them so unless someone walks along and I'm able to ask them uh, I need a way to still be able to have solvent and linseed oil. So my solution to that is pack more glass jars so that if I can't open one, I can just start a new one. And eventually one day I'll get back to the other one and open it. Tape, and I use this to tape down my, uh, my palette paper just so that it doesn't blow in the wind. And this is actually probably one of the most important things to pack when plein air painting, aside from obviously your paints and your easel. And I discovered this pretty much within like the first couple of times that I went plein air painting because if you don't pack it and there's wind your paints or your palette can just like fly off and like go on the ground or like yeah it's just it's not pleasant um so then the next thing on the list is fingerless cotton gloves now that probably sounds weird uh and it is because I bought cotton gloves uh with the fingers on them and then I chopped off the top part so that I could fingerless cotton gloves because you need your fingers to be able to work with paint so you can't be wearing gloves but my hands often get very sunburnt while I'm out plein air painting so I needed something to be able to protect my hands so cotton gloves seemed like a great idea 
remove the, the top part of them so that I still have full use of my hands and easy peasy. That is super good. And I've just put the easel on the seat and I'm just going to seat belt it in because it's quite heavy and I don't want it flying forward when I'm driving or setting off the seat belt alarm. So there we go. We have a nice strapped in easel. All right. Just in front of my easel, I have my bag that has my solvent, my oil, my uh, my tape, and these little cloths that I use to apply the oil. Um, it has some wet ones in it, very important. Um, and I also did end up putting a uh, an art journal into it. Um, and this is more just so that if I'm out of place and I can't decide whether I want to do it landscape or horizontal, I can quickly sketch it up and see what looks better. It has my palette paper and that's pretty much everything packed. All my paints are in the back of the easel. And the next item on my list is PPS foam. So this is like a, a roll of foam. Um, sorry, it's a bit crinkly because I actually had that undone on the floor. Um, so normally it's much neater like this side. Um, so this is a roll of foam and I use these to put between dry paintings so that they don't get damaged. The only thing is, this is only 30 centimeters wide and my canvases are all 40 by 60. So I went online, I looked at some sizes. There wasn't really an in-between, but there was one that was 1.2 meters wide uh, and 50 meters on the roll. And I thought, yeah, that sounds good. What I didn't think about is that this one is like nice and compact, tiny, because it's only tiny. So let me show you guys the other roll of PPS foam I got. I'm going to have to do some serious cutting to get it down to size. So when I ordered a bigger roll of foam, what I didn't expect to show up on my doorstep was this. It's literally huge. I don't know what to do with this. This isn't going to fit in my car. So I'm going to have to use scissors and cut slices that are about the right size. Uh, I think my friends are going to help me with cutting it because there is really not much time left before I leave. Then uh, I'll skip a few because some of them are just things I have to buy along the way, uh, like fuel and uh, I, I downloaded offline maps. Now if you're going out into the Australian outback or just anywhere really remote where there's not going to be signal, download offline maps. It is going to be such a huge help to you. So I've downloaded offline maps and I'm really excited about that because that now means that even if I don't have signal, don't have data, don't have anything, I can still get where I'm going. Um, the other alternative to that is to buy a roadmap, but I actually am not very good at using those um, because, you know, Google exists. Um, so yes, offline maps. Pop up on suite. Now, I'm probably not going to use it unless I'm in somewhere where there's a lot of people because actually... It looks like this and it's huge, but I will definitely be using the tarp that goes on the floor that's underneath it. So there's like a rectangle tarp, um, but yeah, I'm not unfolding it because it's massive. Um, it, oh, the size is there. It's 120 wide by 120 length, which is like, I guess the forward measurement by two meters 10 high. That's massive. Um, but anyway, I'll be taking it with me just in case I need it, but mostly I'll probably just be using the tarp that comes with it. Okay, so next on my list is a drying rack, and this is my drying rack. Um, so yeah, basically, um, sorry, it's really hard to, to show you guys in this small space. Um, so the paintings go in from, from that edge. So my drying rack has 14 slots, but only 13 are usable because one of them doesn't quite line up. And so if I put a painting in that one, it's going to get damaged. So um, I just got to be aware of that and make sure that I don't put a painting in that one while I'm using it. All right, so I'm going to pop my drying rack behind my passenger's seat. Now this takes a little bit of maneuvering. Um, yeah, that should be fine. My drying rack is now in my car, ready for paintings to be slid into it. Let's go get some canvases. Next on the list is canvases. Now, Obviously, because I'm gone for like six and a half weeks, I couldn't have anything huge. So all of my boards that I'm going to be painting on 
are going to be around 40 by 60 centimeters. Um, although I do have a couple of slightly varied sizes that I might take some of, but I won't be taking anything much bigger than that or probably, well, I mean, some of them might be smaller. Um, but yeah, so I went and got all the boards cut at Bunnings and it was a, uh, it was a lot, um, but it's good now that they're all done. So I need to pack all the boards in the car and they probably stack up like, like yay high because there's like quite a few of them. They're all like six or seven millimeters thick. Um, but I need the canvases to take with me while I go painting because it'd be really good to be working on something. Because <laughs> if I don't have them, I can't paint. So just here, I have a whole heap of wood panels and also hardboard panels and I'm going to have to pick some of these out and put them in my car for painting on. Obviously, I have to have enough for at least one a day. So it's a big pile and hopefully the pile will be slightly less in my car, but I haven't counted them and I don't know what else to do. I bought some sponges and I bought these with the idea that I can cut them up and use them to make leaves quickly with oil paint. Now, I normally do this with sea sponges in acrylic if I was to use a sponge, um, but the thing is that with oil paint, I don't know that the sponge is gonna be able to be used again. These were fairly cheap. And I'm just putting this pack of sponges on this side of my drying rack. I now have most of my canvases stacked up on top of my drying rack. Having said that though, there's still a few inside that I have to bring out. I bought a pet pram in preparation for this trip and I'm so glad I did because actually uh, the pet pram is so helpful. I've used it a few times and it is just amazing. So it helps me to carry my stuff because all up my stuff weighs 21 kilos, my camera bag, my easel and my bag full of painterly stuff. Um, so 21 kilos is a lot and before I was just hiking around mountains and stuff and it was like it was really draining I'd be tired after I'd have a sore back um, and I just I was like well I can't on this trip I can't do that um, so I thought how am I gonna carry my stuff around and I looked around for lots of different options and then I found this pet pram on Maya it can hold up to 50 kilograms which is amazing uh, because my stuff weighs 21 and most pet prams actually only weigh like uh, only hold up to like 15 kilos which is not enough now as you can see it's got a lot of storage space so under here this is where i store my camera bag and then up here obviously there's, there's a water bottle holder so that's really nice um but in here is where i store my easel my canvas my paint bag my handbag everything and it's got nice big wheels and obviously it's got a brake at the back so it makes it really easy to push this around anywhere i did pick a four-wheeler one purposely just to have extra stability um yeah i'm really pleased with this i think it was one of the smartest things i've bought and it's really easy to fold up uh, to set up and to back down it takes about five minutes to fold up and about five minutes to set up but yeah so this is my pet pram this is my pet pram my pet pram when it's folded down so as you can see it's quite compact and that's easily going to fit in the roof storage of my car so here we have it my pet pram folded down inside the roof storage next on my list is some solar panels and battery generators so i bought these uh around tax time when i got my tax back i knew that i was going on this trip and i knew that i needed some power and i was like how am i going to do this otherwise i'm going to have to stop in at a uh, at a campsite every few days and then like you know pay what like fifty dollars for a powered site maybe more i don't know it's probably gone up since since then um uh i swear campsites are so expensive even unpowered campsites are so expensive so i just can't afford it so when i got my tax back i bought two solar powered uh battery generators and two solar panels and one of the solar panels i have permanently attached to the storage container on top of my car so that i can permanently have one of my solar battery generators inside the storage container and then i can swap it out each day so that i can permanently have charged devices my phone my camera my gopro etc okay. this is my battery generator that is uh, charged by solar panel um so as you can see it's already on 100 percent so um I don't know how to turn the screen off. I think it just turns off if it's not 
charging anything. It's got a, uh, a plug for a power point. It's got three uh, USB slots and that's where you charge it from. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that one's for and this is really good but I can only have devices up to 500 watts and I've got two of these so I'll be able to alternate while one's charging on top of my car the other one I'll be able to use. So this means I will have unlimited power pretty much in the Outback which is awesome. Behind my passenger seat I have a little stepping stool which folds out and this is so that I can access the container on top of my car if I need, if I can't uh, reach or something. And also I'm going to be putting a spare solar panel. Alright, so cool. We've got a spare solar panel there. We do have this awesome little storage thing that sits behind my passenger seat. Um, and that's nice and hidden back there also because of the solar panel now. And that stool in front of the solar panel. I have a foldable camping seat, which as you can see, folds down to nothing. So I'll be putting that in behind my solar panel in the passenger side of the car. Okay, so I've got all my cans of tuna packed into a menu log bag. There is 108 cans here. And my cracker of choice for my tuna is saladas. So I'm going to be stacking a few boxes of saladas in here. I've also bought some QP spicy mayo because it's really tasty. And sometimes I might want to put this on top of my tuna and biscuits. I also got these crackers in case I wanted some variety from my saladas. And also I can't go 47 days without sweets completely. So I've got some honeycomb muesli bars, some golden oats muesli bars and some strawberry muesli bars because they are all very tasty. I am bringing some LCM yogurt bars as well because they are also very tasty. Also in this bag I am putting some beetroot because I think beetroot is delicious. Unfortunately this can doesn't have a ring pull so I will also be putting a can opener in here. And some peas and corn because they're delicious and kind of veggies. I say kind of because corn's actually really like not of any benefit to you, but it tastes good. I have this little takeaway container that I will be using to heat up any food if I need anything heated, uh, say like baked beans, um, then I will just put them in this container, put this on the dash of my car, and when I come back, it should be hot. Last time I tried this, I nearly burnt my mouth. I am also bringing chili flakes because I'm seriously a chili lover and I think they're really great just to have. Um, but of course, because I'm a chili lover, this container is tiny. This is going to last me like a week. So I'm also bringing these chili flakes. I am also packing tinned apples because apple is delicious, so why not? Pineapple chunks is also going in the bag. I love dull pineapple chunks. They are so tasty. They have got to be the sweetest ones on the market. They're so great and um, yeah, I like there's no added sugar, they're in juice. And you can see in the picture, they actually do look just like the picture. They're like really big chunks of pineapple. It's just the tastiest. Um, so definitely putting these in my bag. Um, but the bag is running out of space, so I have to reorganize this off camera. Uh, also, I'm going to be putting some baked beans because baked beans are delicious. I've got a couple of different flavors because they, they released these caramelized onion ones they're quite nice and i like the english recipe i also like the original actually just all of heinz baked beans are pretty good i'm also putting a bag of freezer bags into my food bag because they're always really useful just for everything and napkins i picked these up from various restaurants um and i will be using them because napkins are always useful i also have a few disposable knives and forks just in case i'm also packing my fork and a little teaspoon I am also packing some dried apricots because dried fruit stays nice and it's a good source of fiber. I also am putting in a cup because uh, if I want to drink anything and I don't want to use a bottle, uh, say like pineapple juice, then I can use this cup for it. Um, so I'm just going to pop that in there. And last but not least, salt and pepper. Now my salt I've put in a clip bag because I, uh, I only have like a really big bag of salt at home and I don't want to take the whole big bag of salt. Um, I've put the word salt on it because I feel like maybe it looks suspicious. Um, I remember last time I went on a road trip, we had salt in a clip bag and then we put it in the glove box of the car and then we went, oh, well hopefully when I get pulled over because that's just going to look really sus. Um, but thankfully we didn't get pulled over. But yes, I put my salt in a clip bag because it's easier than carrying a big bag of salt. 
and I've got pepper to go with that. Here's the boot. So currently I have four boxes of water. There's two in front of each other. And this spot here is where I'm about to put my food bag. Uh, on this side over here, I have a fire blanket, a first aid kit, a beanie, um, a little towel, and a, a sweater jumper, um, just in case I need it. And here I have a scarf that also could double up as a blanket. It's quite big and warm. And I have a picnic rug uh, in case I need it. So I've just got my towel and that one is going right next to my food bag because those are pretty important. Also very important is my folding camp shovel, which I will need anytime I need to use the toilet out in the bush. And so that one can just go there. And just here I have a couple of rolls of toilet paper which I'm just popping in next to the camping shovel. Now for the other side of the boot. I have actually shifted some stuff over so that it's uh, really full on that side. Now, on this side, I've got some ski gloves in case my hands get really cold and an extra beanie and a, uh, a crop top um, just in case I need it. Um, I have coolant, which is pre-mixed uh, for my car, just in case. And I have car oil, just in case there's any issues. Um, I've got my two umbrellas here. I've got a little one and a big one that goes all the way along. I have a spare tripod in case my original one fails me because it is sort of falling apart. Okay, so I have a box which I'm going to put all my bathroom stuff in. This box actually happened to have foam sheets in it already, which I kind of think is useful. So I'm just going to leave them there. That way not too much pressure is going to be put on the outside of the edge of the box. I'm going to be placing some antibacterial hand wash into this box. I actually have two bottles because I just wanted to make sure I have enough, won't run out. And I'm going to place some wet ones into this box, because that's always really handy. Uh, some body lotion, uh, in case I get sunburnt or lose my other one. Um, some foaming hand wash. I use this always after I come back to my car and clean my hands from my paintings. A spare of the Banana Boat Sensitive Sunscreen. This is my favorite sunscreen. It's really good. Some frizz free cream because my hair will get like wildly crazy with flyaways otherwise and this stuff is just amazing. Deodorant because um, yeah, I'm probably gonna really need that on my trip. I'm also putting a box of tissues in here because there's nothing worse than when you get a runny nose and run out of tissues, so that's always good to have. I'm putting some toothpaste in this box because uh, if anything happens where I lose my toothpaste, at least I've got a spare or two. Um, and I'm putting some hair oil because my hair's gonna be like really dry. Um, I'm putting some more hair oil just in case my hair's like crazy dry and I run out of the other hair oil. I am also putting some vitamin E moisturizer in this box because moisturizer is always handy, especially if you're getting sunburnt all the time. Hair ties. Um, so I remember one time I didn't pack enough hair ties for a trip and I ended up using my camera strap to tie up my hair. It was, it was not very good. It was not very fun. So hair ties are super important and I just went and bought a whole new packet of them. I will be keeping hair ties in this box because I figured if this is the box where my bathroom stuff is going, well, when I'm having a shower, I need a hair tie. So it's best to just keep the pile of them in this box and I'll just use one when I need them. And when I lose one, well then I'll find another. I just bought this, so I don't know what this is like, um, but it's an itch relief antiseptic. So it's also an insect repellent um, so I guess, you know, if I get bitten by a mosquito, I'll be able to roll this on and it'll stop itching, but also I can just use this so I don't get bitten by mosquitoes. Anyway, just popping that in the box. I also have body wash to go in this bathroom box because obviously that's really important. And lots of shampoo. Also for this box, I have a spare toothbrush, which I'll just pop in there. I have some cleansing water for my face, uh, some makeup pads to use with the cleansing water. I have a loofah 
for showering and I have baby cotton tips uh, which are like cotton tips only they're really small at the end and I have some garbage bags so I've put my box of extra bathroom kind of chemistry stuff just here and all the ones that I'm going to be immediately using I've taken out and put into a separate bag but this goes at the back of the boot and then if I need like more soap or something I can just go back here or more sunscreen is like somewhere under there so at least it's all together and it's in the boot and I still have a little bit of space left. The next thing on my list is washing powder. I will be stopping at a laundromat maybe like every couple of weeks or so, I'm not sure. Um, but I figured it's good to have washing powder so that when I do wash my clothes, they can actually come out clean. I'm just putting some washing powder in the car so that I can do my washing when my clothes get dirty. That's just going in next to the oil, the, the coolant and uh, all my bathroomy kind of chemistry sort of stuff. This blue bucket is my hair washing bucket. Um, just here I have a honey bucket that is used, are going to be used as a hair washing jug. I have a spare loofah, new with a tag, and I have some slides that I've put into the hair washing bucket. Um, but aside from that, I'm going to try and keep the hair washing bucket fairly empty. Um, maybe I might put my towel in there. Uh, yeah, actually, I think that's probably a good idea. And then that'll be it because this bucket, when I do go to wash my hair, I want it to be able to be easy to empty, easy to put things back into. Now my hair washing bucket is in my boot. Just in case I wind up with a big spider or something in my car, I have fly spray. I have this 24 pack of water bottles and they're just going to be extra shower water. So this is just going in the boot of my car. All right, so I've filled my clothing storage organizers. This one has my bathers and my towel. This one has dresses. This one has shorts and skirts. Um, I also have these see-through ones. So this one has jeans and then uh, this one has tops and this one has socks and underwear. I've just put all these into my boot and now that's my boot fairly full. There is still a little bit of room over here, but I don't want to fill that up just in case I need it for something. I've been crossing off all these items with a whiteboard marker as I go. And the cool thing about this being laminated is it means I can just erase it and I have it clean again for the next time I need this list. Then next is nail scissors. Oh my goodness. Have you ever been out in the middle of nowhere and like snagged your nail? <laughs> it's, it's not fun. Um, so I think uh, nail scissors are really important because if you like catch your nail or your nail rips in a bad way, you can just cut it off. That's so much better. So nail scissors, very important. So I have a pair of nail scissors and I permanently keep these in the glove box of my car because they are so handy. And if you snag a nail out in the middle of nowhere, um, at least you're able to cut it. And you know, the glove box is a good place because I'm able to remember exactly where these are. Next is shades for the car windows. So I bought these shades uh, from Kmart and I'm going to be using them to put, uh, put up in the car windows at night time so that if anyone comes along while I'm sleeping, they don't actually see into my car. And then I will be doing the same for daytime if I'm far away from the car so that if anyone comes along and I'm away from my car, they can't see into my car therefore they're less likely to want to break into it um just in case because you just never know i mean thankfully so far i haven't had a problem but you know i mean i'm, I'm gone for quite a while this time i bought two packets of the side ones for both the front and back and also i bought one for the back window so i'll keep them in the doors and then also just on the back kind of uh, area between the window and the car seat next on the list is a pillow and a quilt and it's really important to have these in the car because I need them to sleep uh, because I would really like to have comfortable sleeps and if I don't have them I'm going to be so uncomfortable for this entire trip and it would just not be fun. So I always have a quilt in my car and I always have a pillow in my car. I've got a few pillows that I'm popping in the car just so that I can be extra comfy. Um, and when I'm asleep, this area here is actually where I'll be putting my camera bag so that no one can see it from the outside of the car if anyone's wandering around at night time. I've just placed this quilt in my car and that's going to be really great for keeping me warm at night. I'm also placing a blanket because I feel like 
I will not ever regret taking too many blankets, but I will regret not taking enough. So a blanket is always a good choice. And I'll just pop that one down there. Yeah. I am also packing my ski jacket because I, uh, I really like this jacket. It breaks the wind, it keeps away the rain. It's just a really good jacket to have. All right, so now I am packing this dolphin torch. In my hands right now, I have a few spare hats and a couple of spare jumpers, and I'm just gonna be placing those in behind this little storage container between the torch and the seat. The next things on my list are my rosary beads and my Bible. And I mean, that's specific to me. I mean, you know, like you guys pack whatever you want, but that's like my, my personal items my rosary beads so I can pray the rosary and my Bible so that I can read the Bible. All right, so I've got my Bible, which I will be taking with me. And I've also got some beautiful rosary beads all the way from Jerusalem, the Holy Land. So they will be coming with me. So I've packed one of these little storage cubes with a whole heap of medicine. So I've got Ventolin because I'm super asthmatic. I have Panadol, um, I have Degas, I have eye drops. So I'm thinking maybe like some pocket tissues because those are super duper handy to have. And some Dettol antiseptic, that's always a good one. And also some band-aids and some lip balm. And I think that's all I'll put in this one and then I can zip it up and that's going to be like my little medical kit that is and things it all needs slightly more regularly. Well, I mean the band-aids hopefully not regularly or the Dettol, but you know, good to have in there. Next on the list is sunglasses. Oh my goodness. So uh, these are really important because the Australian sun, super harsh, super hard on your eyes, hard to see. Um, and yeah, no, so sunglasses, I have quite a few pairs in the car. I still, I don't think you can ever have enough pairs of sunglasses, um, but I'm kind of picky on them because I want them to look good, which is really unfortunate because it means that I should have more pairs of sunglasses than I have, but every time I go to pick some up, if they don't look good, I'm like, no, 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 not happening. <laughs> so sunglasses is the next thing on my list, and I'm going to be using these not only for driving and just generally being out in the sun, but also um, for while I'm painting, because sometimes the reflection from the, the palette paper or even from the wooden board that I'm using as a canvas can be so harsh on the eyes. So if I have sunglasses on, it's easy. I bought a new pair of sunglasses because you can never have enough sunglasses for a road trip because the Australian sun is super harsh and I just can't otherwise, my eyes get too sensitive to the light. I also bought this uh, neck pillow, which has a strap that goes around the back of the driver's seat and then this pillow just sits on the, the headrest of the driver's seat and that gives you a nice neck rest for when you're sleeping at night. Um, and lastly, a vehicle logbook for tax purposes. So because I would like to make art my livelihood, um, this trip is a business trip. Uh, so basically every time I fill up fuel or any other expenses, I will just put into this vehicle logbook. So I've got this vehicle logbook and the reason I've chosen this one is it has vehicle expenses and business expenses as well as on-road recording. So I think that's going to be super handy and I'm going to keep this one in my car so that I can record everything so that when I sell the paintings and this is actually business, I will then be able to claim back on tax. Aside from all the stuff that I've already told you about and shown you, I do have this underwater camera case for my GoPro and I got this in case I see some extremely awesome wildlife that is underwater. All right, so just here I've got my camera bag. Uh, I have my, my tripod I need to put back on the side of my camera bag and I really need to organize this because it's messy. So there's my camera. This is a solar powered uh, power bank and I've got some sunglasses in here. I've got lots of GoPro batteries and their chargers in here. And obviously my GoPro normally sits right in there. And I've got a heap of SD cards that I need to put in here and I need to get this organized. Also, I got this miniature microphone. So we'll see if it works with the GoPro. If it does, that would be handy. So if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And I need to get ready. So I'm gonna go now. All right.
Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again next time. Bye!